everyone, it's Katie from Without a Crystal Ball. Welcome to my channel. I did a couple live streams yesterday about a situation that's happening on YouTube and I wanted to do a more, I don't even know, a deeper dive, but it's not even really a deeper dive. I wanted to give you sort of an understanding about the situation related to Micah and James Stoffer. Now, yesterday, Micah and James Stoffer announced on their YouTube channel that they had rehomed their son, Huxley. In a emotional video, they discussed the, de the decision where they came to having to place him after adopting him and making his adoption story humongous on YouTube. In fact, over the course of n several years, Micah and her husband shared their journey from starting the process of why they wanted to, to adopt to actually picking him up and then all of the updates ever since. Her channel grew exponentially when she began to talk about her plans to bring home a little boy. Before she started all of this, she was a regular mommy blogger talking about all kinds of different things on her channel from cleaning to homeschool to what she ate in a day, your typical YouTuber. But the difference then was that she had a very small channel. Individuals that I've spoken to that knew her personally before she got humongous say that Micah was the type of person that was always seeking attention and she and her husband were dead set on becoming famous on YouTube. This is not to say this is a bad thing. Plenty of people use YouTube as a vehicle in order to make money. However, friends that knew her before she became big say they were concerned about the fact that she might be using her adoption as a means to gain fame. They even said in a, in a message to me that they were concerned about from the beginning whether or not this was all a part of building their brand. Now, I don't know that that's actually true and obviously hindsight is, you know, 2020, but there's a lot, a lot of red flags and there's also a lot of questions about what is okay to share on YouTube and what kind of protections do we have in place for those individuals that don't have a choice and don't have consent and don't have a voice like kids. Micah and her husband began sharing this journey way before they even brought home Huxley and before they even knew or were approved to bring him home. In fact, they made plenty of statements about what his situation was, why they made the choices they made, and what the diagnoses were before even having legal custody of him, which again is very questionable if you consider about privacy issues. Now, photos of him were not shared, but details about him were. But I wanna show you what they said yesterday about why they had to rehome Huxley. You know, with international adoption, sometimes there's unknowns and things that are not transparent on files and things like that. And once Huxley came home, there was a lot more special needs that we weren't aware of and that we were not told. So over the past few years, Huxley's been in numerous therapies to try to help him with all of his needs. And over the last year has been a more intense therapy that he's been in to try to help him as much as possible with his, with his severe needs. And for us, it's been really hard hearing from the medical professionals, a lot of their feedback and things that have been upsetting, really upsetting for us because it's not what we've ever wanted to hear. We've never wanted to be in this position, and we've been trying to get him, get his needs met and help him out as much as possible. It's really our face. <laughs> so they were claiming in this video that they felt like as though the adoption agency withheld information about Huxley and that they didn't have the whole truth. But I spent some time on their channel and I don't think I believe that because when they actually were going through the process of adoption, it was pretty clear that this was going to be an extremely high needs child. In fact, let me just show you some of the things in which she said about not only Huxley, but why she decided to go the route of a special needs child. I've clipped together a number of different videos and in between each of the clips, I'm gonna talk you through some of the things that I think stand out the first video is from 
the very, very early stages of her decision to move forward with adoption. Okay, so she and her husband made the choice to go down the special focus route because they said that after consulting with a lot of different people and her actual background as a, um, a registered nurse, she says, she felt comfortable being able to care for basically any child and she said that she had seen so many different people in her scope of practice. Now, when I was looking online for Micah's actual background, it's the only thing that I could see was that she was listed as a, um, on one of her websites, she said she was an RN in oncology. Now, oncology is cancer. That's not um, a very broad scope, so it's unclear like what she would have seen. Not only that was, if she's in oncology, was she in pediatrics? You know, there's so many different variables here, and. I think any nurse can say this confidently, just because you've treated a patient doesn't mean that's the same as giving, care, like caring for a patient or actually being the caretaker for someone. Being a nurse in a hospital or in a clinic is so different than the day-to-day. -day. She says that they were comfortable with 99 out of 100 of the diagnoses, so they didn't feel uncomfortable going on with anything related to him, and that's why they wanted to go this route. So she and him specifically sought this route out, one, because she said that she was comfortable with it, and two, because it would be faster. She could get a child faster that had special needs and medical issues because of how China adopts children out. So then in another clip, she talks about what happened when she finds out the diagnoses and what her understanding of it was. And then it's interesting because it's very clear that the doctor in the United States told her that this was going to be very severe. Right into this update. Son, I'm not going to talk about his diagnosis, but I kind of want to let you know what his diagnosis pertains to. His di diagnosis is neurological, so it pertains to his little brain. We did get some imaging done recently on our son. When she got the imaging, her optimism went down significantly. She, and it's nothing against this physician, you know, she's just listening to what other doctors, other neurosurgeons and um, neurodevelopment specialists are telling her. But um, her prognosis and everything for our son just went drastic. She kind of almost discouraged us from adopting him, like saying that this is going to be severe, this is going to be a lot, you know, we don't know what unknown elements could be. Um, and for us, it was hard. It was hard to hear somebody say that, but for me, more than anything, I go from that, you know, we don't know what unknown elements could be. Um, and for us, it was hard. It was hard to hear somebody say that, but for me, more than anything, I go from one diagnosis to a totally different diagnosis. But immediately when she gave me another diagnosis, I looked at the bright side. I was like, you know, that could be awesome. There could be so many good things about that second diagnosis. And we don't care what's wrong with him. The only need that our little boy has is he needs his mama not to be scared, but needs his mama to come on and get him home so that he can have a nice family that really truly cares about him and is not scared of what an MRI or a CT scan says. So, but like I said, more than anything, this is our boy and we don't need to consult with any more physicians until I bring this little guy home. He's our son and that's that. He's not, we we're not going to trade him in, we're not going to return him. He's our boy. And, um, um, they find out through a scan, like a CT scan, which is a imaging of the brain. It's not as in depth of as, a, as an MRI, but they say that she finds like a cyst on his brain. And then there's also some conditions where um, it appears as though part of the brain wasn't actually like there or else it was like there was some um, tissue that had died. And they, given the fact that the imaging of the brain was abnormal, the doctor who she said she trusted before she even mentioned i cut out the part but she says i trusted this doctor she had been very optimistic this is someone we really trust someone that we work with and then when we looked at the imaging she suggested that you know maybe we don't adopt him because of his severe need the doctor told her this is going to be severe 
Obviously, doctors are not like crystal balls. They don't have crystal balls. And that's why this channel is called Without a Crystal Ball because my son has a neurological disorder and we don't have a crystal ball. And children with neurological disorders and portions of their brains missing or being abnormal can definitely beat the odds. But I think doctors as a whole, when they look at imaging of a brain, can look at the data and suggest this is the problems you're going to see. These are probably some of the things that could happen. And I think it was probably in her best interest to actually listen to that doctor with their expertise and knowledge and take that into consideration. She had already fallen in love with this child and she had decided that this was her child. Mind you, she is sharing all of this information on YouTube and she is not the legal guardian of this boy. She does not have any legal like say in his life. She is disclosing private and personal information about a child that she has no custody of. And she's divulging all of this to hundreds of thousands of people before this child ever comes to her house, before she's ever approved to adopt the child. She's literally just in the process of figuring out if this child is someone she wants to pursue. There's a lot of privacy issues here that make me concerned. But then the fact of the matter is they literally said, well, they didn't tell us about what was going to happen. Well, nobody would have been able to tell you what was going to happen. Not only that, and a lot of the critics on YouTube, on all over the media or all over social media are basically saying, like, if this would have been your own child, would you have given up on him? They knew full well walking into this that this was going to be a humongous experience, like a humongous commitment for them, a huge commitment. And yet they decided to move forward. You can't fault someone for having rose colored glasses on it, but they had so many people telling them, experts telling them this was going to be significant. And she then, she ignored it. So then, and then they, and then they claim on their YouTube that they were lied to. I don't think they were lied to. They just probably didn't have all of the information because as children develop, things change. So then in another video, she and James talk through some of their concerns they have in a Q&A about adoption. And mind you, they made like 18 to 20 videos before they ever even met him, talking all about him and her channel grew huge. You know what I mean? Huxley's diagnosis, knowing what I know today, if you were asking me that question initially. You would have been scared. I would have been very scared. You might not have accepted, but no. I feel like through this process, it's taught us how to love unconditionally. So again, they're talking there about how this could be extremely severe. This could be a really big deal. Um, but again, sort of not focusing on the fact that there's these all these silver linings. And I think any time that you're walking into being a parent or having a diagnosis like this, like you have to be, you can't sit in the negative. But the thing, the difference here is that like if you or I, like me, for instance, I birthed a child that ended up having a lot of needs. Obviously, when it's your biological child, you have no idea what you're going into it. You're not picking it because for many of us, it's not something that's noticeable on a scan before birth. And so we don't know. But these people knew full well that there was some significant issues and then they still decided to move forward with this. They still made the choice to do this. They still knew that this was going to be an issue and they said, we're gonna love him unconditionally. We are so humbled by this. It's actually kind of like, you know, part of you is like, they've spent so much time and energy disclosing all of this information, which again, this child is still not theirs legally, and they're still disclosing all this information, and they're acting like it's gonna be all roses, and it, and they're, un, they're prepared, but they're not prepared. But they have all the information, you guys. They have all of the information. An important thing to note is that just because at one or two he's tracking developmentally, a lot of times with neurological conditions, as children grow and the age and the, the gaps will widen. So my son was totally on track at that age too, and then it got wider, and that, that can happen. And so I think they just didn't, they weren't listening to people that were telling them a million different ways not to do this. Then in another video, they talked about again why they were choosing to go the route of special needs. So this is again proving to you guys that this is something that they wanted. And I'll show you this. This was another video of her and James. So they went out and picked him. So they admitted again that it would have taken longer if an agency would have placed a child with them based on their specific needs and wants. But instead, they sought him out through a catalog that was available online of people, of children that had never been placed due to their needs. So nobody had actually decided to adopt Huxley because of his specific needs. And they still went forward with it 
and they still decided to do this because it would be faster. Obviously, they have this like impulsive need to, you know, they have this incest, not impulsive. Obviously, they wanted to adopt a child, but there's again so many different red flags here. The doctors tell them not to adopt. They pick a child that had already been passed up a million times because of his needs and wants. There has so many, you have doctors saying these are going to be severe needs. And then they're going, well, I don't know, maybe he'll be fine. No, if a doctor tells you it's going to be severe, it's going to be severe. They don't lie about these kinds of things. And then just to drive home this point one more time is another video of hers prior to getting him, prior to having any authorization to adopt him, prior for any approval, she again talks about his diagnosis not familiar. okay so again she knows what's going into it and again she's ignoring what her doctor said so she says because here's the thing about these adoptions is that a lot of times especially with the different countries the doctors and that the agencies will will use in like say china or the other international companies countries they will tell you anything and they will say everything is fine and they literally looked at a scan and said oh it's just a cyst he'll be fine but a experienced doctor here in the United States said the exact opposite, not working for the agency has no ties or no affiliation or no incentive to get this child adopted out, tells her clearly that this is going to be a very significant issue and she doesn't want to listen to it. So you can't fault someone for wanting to like see the best in someone, but you can't tell me that based on all of the evidence that she didn't know what was going on or that she had somehow been misled by this place because even if she puts the fault on there, it doesn't make sense to me because she actually was told by doctors in the United States that this was not a good idea or if, it, if she was going to plan to move forward with it, it was going to be an issue of her needing to dedicate a lot of time and resources to him. So this is sort of what the end of this specific video. Next time we'll get into what happens after they get home. Hopefully give, this gives you a better understanding of the process they went through and whether or not they had the right information to make this decision. I think they did. I don't think anyone can truly be prepared, but I think they knew ahead of time this was going to be severe. They said repeatedly it didn't matter to them that they were not going to trade him in, that they were going to love him unconditionally. And then when it got to a point where he was not able to film, he wasn't, you know, he couldn't handle different separations, he was dealing with his specific needs, which were very significant they decide to rehome him because it was not convenient and then at the same time not tell any of their subscribers delete comments and mind you they funded they crowdsourced this entire all of it they raised funding the entire thing to cover the cost of their adoptions they crowdsourced for therapies all the while they bought a over seven hundred thousand dollar dream home they made tons of cash, tons of money on his videos. He had a video, their gotcha day was 5.5 million uh, views. Through Huxley's adoption story, her channel not only exploded in subscribers from 4,000 subscribers to today at over 700,000 subscribers, but she also obtained sponsorships, very lucrative ones, and has consistently been promoting these sponsorships in all of her videos. Even her last video that she posted on her channel with Huxley in it was a sponsored video. So she made a ton of money on him. Her subscribers funded this by donating to her and giving her the money to adopt him. They helped crowd, she crowdsourced his therapy, even though she bought those houses and expensive rings and expensive clothes. And she completely like refitted and, and furnished her home and then complained about his therapies and the needs that he had and the frustration she was experiencing. And then she went on to have another kid. So in the next video, we'll talk a little bit more about what happened after Huxley came home. This should give you a high level of what happened before and you can decide, did they have all of the information? Let me know in the comments below. Bye guys.